We are recording live again from day two here at Advancing Prefab, and we're right in the, the middle of lunch. I got Ray from DPR here. Thanks for taking the time and joining the show. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. This is a great show, and I love, uh, love what you're doing. Yeah, thanks. So uh, start, uh, let's give a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind, and kind of what brought you to Advancing Prefab this year. Oh boy. Um, well, so I have a background in volumetric modular real estate and a background in innovative structural systems. Uh, kind of learn learn the hard lessons, the the hard way um, of what product delivery looks like uh, versus project delivery. But then also have been fortunate enough to work around a lot of great uh, designers and a lot of great builders and, and look at the way that you know we have kind of traditionally uh, archaic types of deliveries. And so. Um, yeah, I now lead DPR's prefab strategy uh, company-wide and, and, and trying to determine the best ways that we can integrate more off-site into a self-performing general contractor. Mm. So I'm here at the show because there's a lot of really great people uh, doing a lot of great things and companies that are leading the way and, and we like to learn and share you know, amongst each other how we're doing those things uh, so that we can actually you know, make sure that all the, the rising tides you know, lift all the boats together. Right. What's the some of the, the big takeaways so far from the show? Biggest takeaways, I think um, what I'm really liking is I'm seeing more and more um, industrial engineer type uh, conversations, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we in the construction industry have very traditional types of roles and other industries have uh, the right kind of roles that mm -hmm. really enhance our productivity and really kind of move us the right direction and I think you know industrial engineers are, are one of them and so it's great to see that starting to pop up in different conversations and on slide decks and so that's one big takeaway. Uh, a second takeaway I think are more and more designers are starting to come to the mm -hmm. show uh, and if we really want to make downstream impact we have to have upstream decision making sooner mm -hmm. and I think that uh, designers and owners are really a big integral part of uh, that key enabler you know the key enablers in, in doing that mm -hmm. yeah I've been surprised at how many architects are mm -hmm. here so far and they kind of say it quietly like yeah I'm a recovering architect or something I try to slip it in but yeah uh, that's I think that's a really cool thing of, of seeing that this event is attracting really a, a wide spectrum of people coming in. That's right, yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, so over the last couple of years, what has been some of the, the, the momentum changes or some of the kind of key evolutions of the prefab journey? Hmm. Well, I think, they, I think us as an industry are really thinking about a product mindset versus project mindset and, mm -hmm. and learning what that means. So you know, being able to uh, look for the redundancies across uh, different building types or even core markets and then having kind of an agnostic approach to, to creating a product and then mm -hmm. and what that means. So so the new the product uh, delivery or, and introduction, sorry, new product development and introduction um, uh, kind of concept is something that is starting to become more and more discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what that, all that you know, downstream what that means. So, you know, collecting data, understanding what your time trials look like so that you can feed that back into into your overall system, I think are things that we're starting to see more and more of. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's great. And then there's just the way that you, you can display your your learnings by doing continuous uh, improvement and type, you know, feedback loops. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing more and more data, which is which is great too. If you if you don't have goals and you don't know where you are, you can't really figure out where you're going. You know, mm -hmm. so that's been a trend I think lately. Yeah. What do you think the biggest friction or, or hurdle is in the way of really going to the next level with mm, modular traditionalism? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, traditionalism mm -hmm. uh, across our industry, uh, we we can't take that for granted. There are a lot of great builders, and a lot of great designers, and a lot of great owners doing a lot of great projects. Mm -hmm. at, the challenge is that it's kind of the same process. So um, introducing new change is, mm -hmm. is a difficult thing. Uh, and then I think, you know, just uh, creating that pull mm -hmm. is, is a, a challenging thing as well. And so, um, you know, the friction though is, is getting enough of the opportunity to really go deploy some of these, these mm -hmm. new concepts and having open-minded and, and willing uh, uh, teams to, to really drive that uh, is a challenge as well. However, when you show the value of, of what we're doing uh, with real life examples and you know um, and real problem solving, it, that challenge 
there's, there's less and less friction. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I think that. And then also, um, you know, we, we don't get in early enough, and we've been talking about this for the last, mm -hmm. I don't know, seven, eight years uh, at these, these shows, but if we get in early enough, then it's really, um, the, the flow goes a lot smoother. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that if we can get more designers uh, and more owners thinking about how we do, you know, program delivery and, and product delivery versus project delivery, I think that we'll, We'll be able to make some big strides. Mm -hmm. How are you on your team really helping to, to bring about that kind of cultural shift in, in, in mindset to not be in the, we've always done it this way camp, but be open to exploring new things? It's the, uh, here, let me show you, kind oh. of mentality. Mm -hmm. And uh, diving in head first, being there mm -hmm. as a, a teammate with project teams uh, versus the kind of, you know, you have to do it this way, kind of an approach, right. which that this, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being uh, willing to to roll up your sleeves and show the value uh, has has been a, a great way that the team is is approaching it. Uh, and then, you know, again, back to value. You know, if we can spend time to actually show the different variables in this value equation, that's all different. You know, for every different client or every different building, you know, we can with evidence, you know, uh, show where the value is, that's mm -hmm. that's how the team's kind of, you know, making strides right now. Mm -hmm. How have you seen the, the evolution on the owner's side of things mm -hmm. to be getting more bought into prefab? So owners are seeing that they need to quickly deploy their, uh, their buildings, right, mm -hmm. and their programs. And so they, I think they're seeing that by economy of scale, and um, yeah, economy of scale reduces some of the friction, uh, and it also eases some of the the decision making. Mm -hmm. And so I think owners are starting to see if they can help with decisions earlier and and create some of the framework for the decision making for the rest of the team. Then, mm -hmm. then that framework is really what is of, of spectacular value for us. So, um, you know, you're seeing. Uh, more and more owner engagement at an earlier time, uh, and, and helping us, you know, kind of craft the program, um, uh, you know, along the way. So, I think that's one thing. Other, other things I'm seeing with with owner groups are, you know, a desire to again learn more about products, right? So, you know, once they know that they can do multi trade racks that are, you know, very dynamic, and they they go across all of their different building types. You know, they're, they're becoming more inquisitive and, and, and learning about you know, what they can do to support teams. So it's, uh, it feels like a bi-directional or a symbiotic kind of um, approach, which, which I think also kind of moves towards maybe a different type of a con contractual change or a contractual agreement. And so I think uh, what I'm seeing with owner groups are we're acting more and more like IPD lights or design build lights. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and perhaps not having the, the, the real contractual um, you know, terms th that way. And, and a lot more of a, you know, the general contractor's perspective of a design assist role is, is really becoming more and more of a partnership versus mm -hmm. a, um, versus a, a contract that you, you know, sign and, and, and uh, go back to when you have to. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, well, what kind of uh, education is, is needed to maybe debunk some misconceptions that owners have around prefab and modular? I think that there's a misconception that um, that it costs a lot more, um, mm -hmm. but the reality is it can cost a lot less uh, if the right framework is set up. Yeah, uh, I think that um, you know there's a, a myth that that you get a you get a box. All you get is right. some crummy looking uh, box, and, and the art and architecture is there. It's still there and always mm -hmm. it ha and will be there. Um, and as we mature uh, more and more on this industrialized construction journey. The, the option optioneering is out there, which is amazing. We've seen a lot of really, you know, neat um, conversations over the last couple of days about generative design, right? Generative design is an enabler to all the diff, diff optioneering um, of what's out in our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that the the stigma of prefab being kind of a one size fits all solution is is no longer here and if it you know if it comes up i think it's our our responsibility to to show the evidence that that's that's a, a consideration or a thought of the past so yesterday during amy's keynote she talked about the expected experience of construction mm -hmm. from your vantage point what should what's possible with the expected experience for construction hmm. uh well i think that you know, we've been saying this for 
15 years now, but uh, what you draw is what you get. And, and now, you know, it's really what you model is what you get. And, and, and we need, what we would expect is to get to a high level of detail, LLD 400 plus, where you have uh, model to machine workflows. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, if we've spent all this time doing clash coordination and, and yet we have these dummy objects, uh, you don't really, you're not really getting what you've modeled or drawn. Mm -hmm. and what we need to have is, you know, the real strut assemblies, the, the, the real light gauge framing, the real MEP, um, you know, pipes and fittings and couplings. We need, we need what it's, it's exactly there. And so um, I think that the expectation is if we can skip some of the archaic nature of how we handle our, our documentation from uh, you know hand to hand to hand, and if we get had a true digital asset that was that gave us the the ability to manufacture or you know have a, a production type uh, approach and mm -hmm. a production system from the model, then then I think that would be a, a massive improvement. So that, I mean that's what I expect. Uh, that's what our path is, and that's what we'll see within the next I think. You know, one to one to three years, really. Yeah, nice. That's a short timeline. I, I like it. Yeah, I mean, we're a little aggressive, uh, but you know, setting some uh, lofty expectations or, or or BHAGs, you know, big, hairy, audacious goals, yeah. I think, is is a way that we get there. Um, but you know, there has to be a really well designed out, you know, objectives and key results kind of a, a path on the one year increment. But I, I feel like we're we're getting there. Yeah. So, what are kind of the the first couple dominoes to to fall in order to make that a uh, reality? Uh, I think it's the, the concept of productization mm -hmm. and I think our, our industry understanding what that, that means mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then building the capabilities uh, within our work groups to do some of the off-cycle product development, mm -hmm. meaning you know, don't have a project specific uh, uh, opportunity that drives some kind of product, product creation. Mm -hmm. It's really more of uh, you know, the investment that builders or the investment that designers and, and owners need to make uh, in order to do the off-cycle product development. So that's challenging because our industry, uh, we, we kind of reinvest, what, one to two percent of our, of our bottom line into product R&D and, and just R&D in general, whereas automotive is doing upwards of eight to ten percent, and, and even and some companies are even more. And so, right. you know, it's I think... It's a big difference. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge difference, and, and, and it's still a problem. So the first domino to fall is, is, is reinvestment in, in the bottom line. Yeah. What's currently really piquing your interest in the, the prefab world? Right now, piquing my interest, all of it. I love it. Um, <laughs> that's a bad answer, but uh, I think what's piquing my interest right now is building is building tools, but but also more importantly, building people. Um, mm -hmm. There's we need to build people uh, across the spectrum, you yep. know, from all these different capabilities that we know will advance prefab. So. Uh, yeah, people, process, and tools are, are what pique my interest right now. Mm -hmm. So on the, the people side of things, one of the, obviously the huge hurdles in construction is, is getting people yeah. <laughs> into the industry. How have you found success in, in trying to bring people in from outside? Yes and no, <laughs> uh, and more so on the no side. Uh, I think it's challenging um, when we see similar uh, uh, qualities or capabilities that we want mm -hmm. in people like industrial engineers, for example, it's hard to recruit or attract and recruit and mm -hmm. hire and inspire uh, you know, people that are from different industries right now. However, when we have events like this and we start inviting people from different industries out or to, to events like Advancing Prefab, I think we're starting to, to see some of the light bulbs go off. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yes, on the other side, we have been able to recruit people from, from the automotive uh, industry and from uh, maritime in some cases, mm -hmm. um, and also agricultural uh, that, that may have more of a production kind of mindset or manufacturing mindset. And so, yeah. um, so it's happening, but it's not happening as fast as I think I would like it, but uh, you know, it's okay. Yeah, slow and steady, yeah. bite size uh -huh. improvements is good. On How that. to eat an elephant, right? One bite That's at right. a time. That's so, right. Yeah. So one of the kind of core themes of the show is around innovation in mm. construction. What does innovation mean to you? Oh boy, um, innovation is a variety of things. I think you know, we, we're seeing a lot of, of um, you know, robotic related um, innovation, which are helping us with our, our field side of uh, improvements, whether it's you know, laser scanning or, or layout machines or you know, drilling 
um, drilling machines or robots, you know, there's there's some really great innovation there. But I think there's also a lot of innovation up front in, in virtual design um, where we're getting smarter and smarter about, about the data that we're using and mm -hmm. consuming, as well as you know how we're how we're leveraging the data in order to be more efficient in, in some of the um, design decision making, as well as just the visualization. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's great innovation in, in simulation efforts as well. So you know, what you draw is what you get, but like you have to also show show people how it works. And so right. simulation is certainly an area where we're getting smarter and smarter. Um, so I think those are some of the focus areas right now. Yeah, nice. How do people find out more information and connect with you? Oh, well, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. You can look, look me up, Ray Boff, DPR's uh, national prefab leader. Uh, and I think that's probably the best way. There are a couple of YouTube videos that are out there and, and great podcasts like this, right? Yeah, there you go. Very cool. Well, last question for you. If I could give you all construction power, you could snap your fingers and innovate one thing. What would you choose to innovate? Oh, my gosh. That's such a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> what would I choose to do? So if I was CEO of the world, uh, what would I do right now? Yep. Uh, I would uh, go to Gemba. And so I would take people, whoever, whoever it is, the group, our group, directly to the spot of where we need to improve and walk them all along the whole process. And so yeah. you got to see it with your own mm -hmm. eyes. You have to feel it with your own hands. You have to you know, breathe it with your own lungs. And I think that that's, that's what I would do, I'd get the right people together this right group together and I would go to Gemba. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for yeah, taking the time. You. I enjoyed great. it. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Awesome. Right.